Hi everyone. We saw in the last video that a graph is a tree if and only if it is acyclic and the number of edges it has is equal to the number of vertices minus 1. And we often write this as m equals n minus 1. And in fact, a really nice corollary of this theorem is as follows. A forest, and now remember what a forest is. A forest is just like a tree, but it doesn't have to be connected. So it has to be acyclic, but we don't know whether or not it's connected. So a forest of order n, which means n vertices, and k connected components is going to have m equal to n minus k edges. Now if you think about the tree example, that's like a, a forest with only one connected component, and then you have the m equals n minus 1. And to prove this, it's actually the exact same proof as what we did up here, but just a little bit more general with these k components. Right, so now in this video, what I actually want to do is prove a theorem very similar to the theorem up top, but it's going to be a little bit different. And before I do that, I want to tell you something about spanning trees. So spanning tree, what is that? Well, if you've heard the word spanning before, if you've seen the video on spanning and induced subgraphs. And so really a spanning tree is in fact a spanning subgraph. So if we have a spanning tree of a graph G, it really is what you think it would be. It's a spanning subgraph of G that is a tree. So it means G doesn't have to be a tree, not necessarily, but the spanning subgraph is a tree. Um, please revisit the video on spanning subgraphs and induced subgraphs if you're unfamiliar, but just I'll remind you quickly that a spanning graph has all of the vertices. It hits, it touches all of the vertices of G. So maybe let's do a fun little example. I'll draw some sort of graph G. This pink thing is going to be G and really G could be any old thing you like and in general it doesn't have to be a tree so I'm just drawing it like this. And now there's more than one way to find a spanning subgraph but I'm just going to highlight here in green a spanning subgraph. So make sure that you get every single vertex and you cannot make any cycles. So here I actually have a choice at the moment. I could go like this and make this one green and that would be a spanning subgraph. Or I could have gone like this and made that one green. And there's many other options. But this right here is a spanning subgraph and it happens to be a tree also. Well it's a tree because I didn't make any cycles. Notice that if I had included this edge as well I would still have a spanning subgraph but it would no longer be a spanning tree. So I remove that. So there's an example of a spanning tree. And in fact, we can always say that any graph, as long as it's connected, has a spanning tree. Isn't that fascinating? Really, every connected graph G has a spanning tree. And let's think a moment for about why that is. If G is a tree, so let's just say the funny case where G is a tree, well then we are already done because it is itself a spanning subgraph of itself and it's already a tree. Okay, so let's say if G is not a tree. Not a tree. Well, that just means that you have some graph G and somewhere inside of it you have some kind of a cycle. I'll just draw a little cycle, but you have a lot more inside of G and somewhere you have a cycle because we have G, a connected graph, which is not a tree, so that must mean it has a cycle, otherwise it would have been a tree. Well, what you can do to turn, to find a spanning tree is to just really remove, think of removing one of the edges of a cycle, and now think of the new graph that you've got. It may still have some cycles, but you just find another cycle that's in there, and you remove one of the edges on it. So you find another cycle, and you just remove one of those edges, and you keep doing that until you end up with something that is a spanning tree. No, you never ever remove vertices, so you're always getting all of the vertices, but you just remove edges of cycles as necessary until all you have left are bridge edges. 
So that's just what you do. You keep removing edges of the cycles until only bridge edges remain. And in fact, on the very first video on trees, we saw that a connected graph is a tree if and only if all of its edges are bridges. So in doing this, you're going to end up with a graph, which is a subgraph of our G. It has all the vertices, so it is spanning, and it is, in fact, a tree. So this is excellent. It means every connected graph has a spanning, a spanning tree. And in fact, spanning trees are sort of easier to work with. Trees themselves are sometimes easier to work with than graphs, and sometimes knowing the properties of the tree, the spanning tree of a graph, can tell you something about the graph. And I found that very useful in my research, in fact. And by the way, you should notice that when you do this process of removing edges of cycles until only bridges remain, you can actually figure out exactly how many things you need to remove. Let's say that G had M edges. Well, we're going to have to remove exactly M minus N minus 1 of them. Why is that? Well, because we want M minus this number to equal N minus 1, which we know will give us a tree at the end. So this number here, M minus N minus 1, is the number of edges that need to be removed. Edges that need removing. And if you think about that, you might say, okay, that's all fine, that makes sense, because a tree has to have number of edges equal to N minus 1, so that's fine, I believe you. But if you think about it for a moment, you'll realize it actually tells you something quite nice. What it tells you is that every connected graph has to have at least n minus 1 edges. Think about it because if you have a connected graph, you can go through this process to build yourself a spanning tree, and then you know the number of edges that you had to remove. Well, this has to be a positive number, or at, at least 0, but not less than 0. And so that means that m has to be bigger than or equal to n minus 1. And in fact, this is the corollary that's going to help us with our next proof. So we've already seen that a tree is connected and acyclic. And then we had this theorem that said, in fact, a graph is a tree if and only if it's acyclic and has this property that the number of edges is n minus 1. So now what we're going to do is look at a very similar theorem, which is going to say that a graph G is a tree if and only if it is connected and has M equal to N minus 1. So basically exactly this theorem, but with the word acyclic replaced by the word connected. So I'll scroll down, and we'll do that next. Right, so this is the theorem that I promised you. A graph G is a tree if and only if it's connected and has number of edges equal to n minus 1, where n is the number of vertices. So let's go ahead and prove this. We'll do the first direction like this. If G is a tree, then we already know it's connected and acyclic, right? So we already know the connected part. And in fact, we already have seen a theorem that said a graph is a tree if and only if it's acyclic and has m equal to n minus 1. So the simple fact that it is a tree already tells us from our previous theorem, previous theorem, that m is equal to n minus 1. So we're good. This direction is very, very easy. Now let's take a look at the other direction. So now we say that G is connected and has number of edges equal to number of vertices minus 1. What do we need to do? We're aiming to show that G is a tree, so all we need to show is that G is also acyclic. And if we are aiming to show that it's acyclic, what we are going to do is work by contradiction. So we're going to say, suppose that G has a cycle. Suppose C is a cycle in G. Now, this is not what we want. We're going to try to show that there is an um, impossibility here, a contradiction. So what we'll do is we'll just let E be any edge on our cycle. All right, so we have some edge on our cycle. And now we consider the graph G without that edge. So technically the notation for removing edges is more like this. And we've just removed an edge from G. Well, what did we really do? 
if G was some graph over here and inside of it we had a cycle, so this blob represents G and inside of it we had some cycle, that was C, and maybe one particular edge was E. So this little edge is our E and it's sitting inside of our cycle C. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to remove that edge and consider this new graph without that yellow part. Well, it's still connected. This piece right here is still connected. Because if you have a cycle and you remove an edge of the cycle, you didn't disconnect anything that was re related to the cycle. So this is still connected. But we knew that G had n minus 1 edges. So how many edges does G without E have? It has n minus 2 edges. Oh, well, that sounds fishy because we now have a connected graph with n minus 2 edges, but look at the top of the screen. We have this corollary that tells us every connected graph needs to have at least n minus 1 um, edges. And so this is bad. This is a contradiction. We cannot have a connected graph with so few edges. Well, that's good because we were looking for a contradiction. What this means is that you cannot have a cycle in G. This means that G is acyclic. Acyclic. And now we know that G is acyclic and connected, so therefore it's a tree. Yay, and we're done. So let's summarize what we know about trees. What we know about trees is that they are connected and acyclic by definition. So this blue bit represents the definition. And then we have a theorem that says that in fact we have a tree if and only if it's acyclic and has the number of edges equal to n minus 1. And then we have another theorem which tells us that in fact if we have connected and m equal n minus 1, then it's definitely a tree. It's an if and only if. So in fact, if you have any two of these three properties, you know you have a tree. So in this case, you have a tree. And in this case, you also have a tree. And you guessed it, you have a tree here too. Hope you're having fun with graph theory. If you want to be updated on the latest videos, just subscribe to the channel and you'll see me next time.